Hello and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 29th of April 2019 and the time has gone, just gone rather, uh, 10.05 British summer time. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been a fairly quiet start uh, to the European session today. Um, we had a mixed session in Asia overnight. Uh, Chinese stocks were, were, were up on the session, rebounding from some of the losses that they occurred last week, and we had a bit of a decline on the Nikkei 225. Uh, we've had it's a we've had no major news, um, a, a major macroeconomic or political news uh, in that would affect global markets. Uh, we have heard from U.S. trade talks the usual situation whereby trade uh, apparent according to Steve Mnuchin, U.S. Treasury Secretary, they're in the um, the final laps. But we've been hearing this sort of stuff for some time now. Uh, we've been drip fed bits and pieces of information from the US-China trade talks. <clears throat> Excuse me, they've been largely positive, but we're not really kind of seeing any detail. And keep in mind, we've seen uh, you know record close for the NASDAQ 100 and record highs for the NASDAQ 100, and we've seen a record close from the S&P 500, and, and, and the S&P 500 is set to actually print um, a, a record high uh, later on today. You know, well, that's what the future markets are indicating. Uh, so a lot of the, the really good news relation to U.S. China is already priced in. Um, what we've seen is a fairly uh, quiet start to the to the European session. The big news out of Europe is that of the general election that was held in Spain uh, over the weekend, uh, the Socialist Party won the election, but they failed to win a majority. So it could be a few other weeks or even months before they potentially look to actually get um, get get a get a coalition going with, with other people. Who are on the uh, on the on the centre right, or even actually on the on the on the kind of separatist side, um, the the, sap, the the Catalan separatists, or possibly even uh, people who are further on the left um, of Spanish politics. So for the time being, um, we'll probably have a few weeks, or possibly months, of um, of uh, of um, political negotiations before we can actually get a a, a new government up and running in Spain. Um, I basically start to start off now by taking a big look, a look at some of the major markets and see how things have been performing. So the FTSE 100 um, has been broadly been in a has been in a fairly solid upward trend since late December. This is a very common theme across US and um, US well actually global stock markets really uh, US European and Asian stock markets. So a nice upward trend, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Last week we hit a fresh six-month high. We have managed to drift us a bit below that, but we're still very much in the wider upward trend. And if you can hold above this region here, kind of 7,400, or down to this this uh, this line here at 7,370, if you can hold above that area, it's likely we could see further gains uh, being be made. And uh, should we press on higher from here, and should we take out uh, last week's high? We could be looking at heading up toward this area here, a level not seen since September. Uh, 7,558, and I should we go beyond that, we could be looking towards the psychically, psychologically important 7,600 mark. To be honest, it's only really if you have a size to break below this area here at 7,370, because then we begin to think, okay, maybe the bullish trend for the last few months has, has come to an end, and we could be looking at heading back down towards this red line here, the trend the moving average, which comes into play uh, not too far away from the 7,200 mark, 7,209 to be precise. The DAX, the German market, has managed to rack up a fresh six-month high, so things are, are looking fairly positive over in Germany. As you can see here, the, the German market has been in a solid upward trend, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. As I just mentioned, we've hit a fresh six-month high on the DAX to get an indication of what, of what sentiment is like. Uh, we're currently trading in around 12,305, and if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this region, a level not seen since uh, September last year, which come into play in around the 12,460 mark. If you do manage to drift lower and you do manage to have a fairly sizable pullback, we could be looking at heading back down towards 12,100 or possibly even uh, down towards 12,000 itself. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a big psychological number, but we also see that it managed to act as resistance on the way up and actually also briefly as a bit of support as well. And if you do actually manage to break below 12,000, we could be looking at targeting this area in around here, in around 11,823. 
So take a look now at what's going on with the S&P 500. So US markets, US equity markets are in even better shape than their European counterparts. Uh, as is, as is, if you look, take a look here at the chart, we can see that, that the previous highs uh, were in around um, were in around the kind of um, 2,935, 2,937 kind of region. The S&P 500, according to the futures market, are tipped to be opening open at 2,941. Obviously, that could all change between now and the half uh, and the U.S. Open in about four hours' time. But we're set to open at an all-time high, so it really does, does, does give indication of how bullish sentiment is over in the U.S. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at a, a, a targeting 3,000. It's obviously, you know, the next big psychological number to the upside. But keep in mind, there's considerable ground between here and now, here and there. So we could be looking at targeting 2,950, 60, and so on and so forth. Um, over the last three or four months, you know, buying on the dip has been a very popular strategy. We've seen a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. So if we do manage to have a pullback in the S&P 500, we could see fresh buyers enter the fold. And so if we do pull back from here, we could be looking heading back down towards the recent lows in around. Uh, 2,115, uh, 15, uh, 2,112. Uh, drift below that can bring us back down to the, to the psychologically born 2,900 mark, or perhaps even this level here in around 2,896. I'll take a look now what's going on over over the Dow. The Dow isn't as isn't as strong, but it's not it's not uh, too far behind its uh, S and P counterpart. So. If you take a look here, we can see that the all-time highs were achieved in October, and, it's, and it was up around the 26,950 mark, there, thereabouts. Uh, that, that region uh, was kind of the all-time, there, thereabouts, was kind of the all-time highs. We're currently expecting the Dow Jones to open at 26,560, roughly. So if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards the psychologically important 27,000 mark. Uh, if we do manage to see any, any moves to the downside, we might see fresh buyers enter the fold. And if we do see a move to the downside, support can be found from this, where this, where this line is in here, in around 26,278. And a move below that could take us back down towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play just north of 26,000. 26,035 to be, to be exact. We can see here back in uh, mid of March, on a few occasions, the 50-day moving average did manage to act as support. And if a metric has acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely that it'll do so again in the future. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the gold market. We've been talking about how Euro global equities, uh, European, US, and Asian equities have been by and large bouncing back since uh, late December. On the flip side of things, gold has been pushing lower since mid-February. So for the last couple of months, we've seen a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, apologies, a lower low, a lower high, another lower low, and what could be another lower high here. So we've seen, we've seen a, fairly, a fairly clear pattern of a, a bit of a bearish move on the gold market for the past couple of months. If you can, if you continue to kind of push on lower from here, and we take off the recent lows in around the 1266 marks, 66 mark rather, uh, we could be looking heading back down towards um, the fit, could be heading back down towards this area here in around the 1250 region, which coincides with the 200 moving average, uh, which comes. Uh, so the metric is on for, for looking at a metric, which is both important, you know, the 200 moving average is seen as a decent level um, with a barometer of whether the market is impossible, you know, bearish or bullish. But also that coincides with an area of which was both you know resistance and support. Uh, it, it could make the uh, the metric even more important. So if you drift lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards the 1250 region. Uh, any moves to the upside um, in gold are likely to run to resistance in around the psychologically important $1,300 mark. And uh, should we move beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the uh, the, the kind of mid April highs. In around the uh, 1310 mark, and then if you take out this this high here in around 1310, we could be looking at targeting the mid March highs in around 1324. The oil market had a fairly sizable sell off at the back end of last week. We saw a bit of profit taken after the strong week that it had, but more importantly, President Trump stated that he had been in contact with OPEC uh, and basically asked asked for OPEC to actually kind of take some pressure off of uh, gasoline prices, petrol prices. 
So we saw a fairly sizable sell-off on Friday. But keep in mind, we've had months of a rally, we've had four months of a rally uh, on the energy market. So a bit of profit taking uh, is hardly a bit of a surprise. So we've seen a solid upward trend here. Uh, only last week we, we saw a, hit a fresh six-month high. Then we had the massive sell-off, which is this large red candle here. So we're still very much in the upward trend. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this year here. 11 not seen since um, late October last year. Um, that high, just, just shy of $78 a barrel. 70, 77 spot 95. And if you go beyond that, we then you know look at the uh, psychology report and 80 bucks a barrel might come into play. If we do see further moves to the downside, Support could be found from this red line here, the 2 moving average, which comes into play at 69 spot 20. We can see here on a few occasions, um, at the beginning of April, the 2 moving average did manage to act as support on a few occasions. So it's, it's likely it could act as support in the near term. And even if you do manage to uh, drop below the 2 moving average, support could be found from the kind of $68 region. There's a few occasions that mark, that region act as a few occasions that price acted we saw like we saw a lot of um, consolidation in the in the price the price region, so it may become relevant again. Uh, Taking a look now, at what's going on on WTI? Fairly similar chart, whereby it's had a massive rally from late December uh, until basically last week, and then we had a big sell off on Friday. But we're still very much in the upward trend. So, as similar situation here, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. A six month high was racked up last week. And it's, even though we had a sell-off on Friday, this, this this large red candle here, we're still very much in the upward trend. So if we can manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area in at 67 spot 80. And then if we go beyond that, 70 bucks a barrel might come into play. Uh, move to the downside, similar situation. The 30 moving average acted as a support on a few occasions. And the 30 moving average on WTI comes into play at 60 spot 89. That area might act as support, and so might this area here. We can see there's a, there's a few occasions in around $60 per barrel. Uh, there's a few occasions where it acted as resistance on the way up, so it might act as support on the way down. Take a look at the euro versus the US dollar. The euro has basically had a fairly slow and, and painful sell off uh, throughout 2019. Um, We've seen a quite a few series of lower lows and lower highs. Yes, I'm fully aware the high in March clearly took out the high in February, but we've also seen a nice series of lower lows. Um, and in fact, only last week we saw the euro euro dollar fall to a level not seen, not seen since June 2017. So basically, not too far away from the two-year low on the euro dollar. Now, granted, we are a bit off that, and we have found we have recovered ever so slightly, but it's still very much in the downward trend. And if we continue to kind of press on lower and take off the recent lows in around the one spot 11.10 region, we can then be looking heading that down towards the one spot 10 area. Uh, move to the upside on euro dollar likely to, are likely to run in resistance in around the one one spot 12 mark. And if we go beyond that. Uh, so resistance rather might be found in around this area here in around the one spot 1322 area and lastly on the charting front I should take a look at the pound versus the US dollar so the pound had a very impressive bounce back between uh, December mid-December and mid-March but since then we've seen the kind of a slow grind lower to be honest because of the fact that Brexit has not been pushed back until potentially as late as Halloween, uh, the 31st of, of October, uh, a lot of volatility has drained out of the pound. But uh, nonetheless, movements in sterling have been to the downside, partially driven by a, a stronger US dollar, and traders are realizing it's uncertainty in relation to Brexit. The eurozone is in, is in has a lot of economic issues and political uncertainty. Uh, the US economy is doing quite well. So a lot of dollar strength here. A lot of dollar strength and we're also seeing a lot of this kind of a bit of uncertainty in relation to the pound and the euro so we're seeing a slow grind lower on, on, the, on the british pound versus the us dollar if you continue to kind of get in this downward trend which you've been there for a few weeks we could be looking at targeting this region here in around one spot 12 sorry one spot 27.75 uh, and if you take out that level we could be looking at targeting down around here in at one spot 27.10 uh, if you manage to bounce back, uh, the you know psychologically important one spot 30 area might act at resistance. And if we go beyond that, we saw a lot of consolidation in around the kind of one spot 32 area. So keep an eye out on that level should we have a significant move to the upside.
I'll take a look now at the week ahead and if you go to our to our website cmcmarkets.com and look under the news and analysis section you can see the week ahead and looking ahead to today uh, after the closing bell in New York tonight we're going to first quarter figures from Alphabet that's Google's parent company uh, Wednesday and Thursday we have uh, up updates from BP and Royal Dutch Shell on Tuesday Whitbread have their first quarter figures out also on Tuesday we have second quarter figures from Apple over in the US we have the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision on Wednesday. Also Wednesday, we have full year figures from Sainsbury's. Wednesday and Thursday, we have basically the global PMI manufacturing numbers are coming out. On Thursday, here in the UK, Lloyd's have their first quarter numbers uh, released. Um, Indivior uh, have, their, in the, have their first quarter figures released uh, on Thursday. Uh, on Thursday, we also have uh, the Bank of England in interest rate decision and inflation report. And on Friday, we have US non-farm payroll. So it's going to be a big week in terms of both corporate and economic um, announcements. If you've any, uh, just, just before I wrap things up, if you've any comments to make on this video or any of the other, other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.